What's up, folks? I'm Olivia. I'm Ali, and you're watching SVTV. Another. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. We have another recipe for you guys. Let's check it out. Awesome. Now on to the rest of the announcements. Seniors, if you plan on majoring in education, see Mrs. Ross to find out about a renewable scholarship opportunity. Juniors, this is the final day you can submit applications for internship. If you have any questions, contact Mrs. Noble. Now over to Allie with sports. March 1st is the first day for spring sports. Make sure you have your physical and concussion form on file. Stop by the athletics office with any questions. Baseball tryouts are taking place on Monday right after school. The North Locker Room will be open to change. If you have any questions, message Coach Oliva. Speaking of baseball, if you want any fan merch, there is a link on Schoology. Make sure and check that out. Now over to Zoe with weather after this quick commercial break. At all school events and games, make sure to create a safe and welcoming environment. Follow Rule 52, display good sportsmanship, and remember all school rules when cheering on our teams. It's always a great day to be a Viking. Vikings. We are going to start seeing the sun come out more and more as these weeks continue on. Today is National Levi Strauss Day, so make sure to wear some jeans. Today we are going to be seeing our chilly temperatures for pretty much the last time this week, with our temperatures being up in the higher 40s area. For your SVTV 7 day forecast, Today and Sunday is going to be our last day with these colder temperatures before we warm back up into the 50s and 60s for the rest of next week. Now back to your anchors. Thanks, Zoe. The school board is planning on sending students back to school full time. I have another editorial on why that is not the best idea. March 15th, a day now set in stone by the school board to return all Seaman schools to on-site learning. Today, I'm going to present a few more reasons as to why this plan is not in the best interest of SHS students and staff. 
Dr. Noble sent out an email to parents and staff recently with details on returning back to school. In his words, he states, Social distancing will be compromised in many areas, but masks will still continue to be worn at all times. Not only does it state very clearly within CDC guidelines that a mask is not a substitute for social distancing, but at the high school, many students can be seen wearing masks incorrectly or not at all. In my personal experience, I have seen nearly 30 plus students a day wearing masks under their nose, around their neck, or just dangling on their ears. Teachers and administrators walk past these students and tell them to pull up their masks. But the second that supervisor passes, the mask returns to its original state. One remote student said, from my position, I have witnessed several teachers not wearing masks properly or at all, and not properly distancing from students while doing so. They go on to say, if students and staff seem unable to follow the rules that are in place now, what sense does it make to put them in a situation where taking precautions seriously would be even more important? To continue, social distancing is important and the second all students return to on-site learning, classrooms will become an unsafe environment. Currently, my hybrid civil and criminal rights class is packed with social distancing guidelines being followed. This class will have to introduce 11 more students and desks to the room, making this one and a half hour time slot unreasonable and inconsiderate of student and staff health. The rooms in SHS are not made to allow for social distancing and full classrooms. Remaining hybrid is the only way to ensure academic progress and safety. I understand that grades may be weaker this year than in the past, so I offer a second option. Only allow those students who are failing classes to return all on-site learning. Not all students and staff need to be punished for the lack of responsibility held by a few. Next. Keep Wednesdays completely remote. Teachers have been using these days to plan and prepare for their remote and in-person students, whilst also getting a mental health break during this challenging time. Students, on the other hand, have used this time to catch up on schoolwork and get themselves back on schedule. March 15th marks the last nine weeks of the school year, and going back full-time and on-site is dramatic, unrealistic, inconsiderate, and above all, unsafe. So I ask, why now? Why not wait until next school year? Why not plan further whilst also ensuring that all staff members are vaccinated? Is public opinion really more important than the safety of SHS? Another student stated, there are still people at our school that don't believe COVID is a problem and that it's just a flu. I'm going full remote because I'm not relaying my life on the actions of others. Anyone who's been to our school knows the hallways are packed with people breaking social distancing guidelines. There is no proper time to clean or sanitize. The school board sees all of these issues and ignored them purposely, wanting only to please the parents, and in that, endangering anyone who walks into SHS. This year is heartbreaking and difficult for everyone, but we should use this year to prepare ourselves for what is to come in the future, not to make rash decisions that might endanger more of the semen community. Thank you. That's all we have for today, Vikes. Have a great rest of your day.